Good evening, observers. We have spent a good effort in reviewing concepts to make sure everyone is up to speed. Let's do that again now, especially since one of the most ignorant claims has resurfaced and in the most arrogant and insulting of ways. While my recent thrashings of Harvard and NASA may be more impressive, crosshairs now fall upon a proclaimed geophysics expert. And what is about to happen in this video, folks, is how you definitively and academically crush an opposition. She claims that the last magnetic pole shift was 780,000 years ago, and that they take a very long time to happen, and moreover, that they are no concern for the biosphere. Oh, you were finished? Oh, well, allow me to retort. Veteran observers, I can hear you laughing already, and for the rest of you, let's go over exactly how often these events occur, including how fast they can happen, and then we will go over just how dangerous they can be. First, it is important we review the two recent studies confirming that we did have a mini geomagnetic excursion in the middle of the Holocene about 6,000 years ago, first found in China and then confirmed in volcanic flows in Russia. So, we have added it to the list of officially confirmed excursions in recent history. I ask you, does this look like it takes thousands and thousands of years? Does it appear the last magnetic change on Earth was 780,000 years ago? When you realize that similar signatures exist at the 30,000 years ago mark and it simply hasn't been officially confirmed or declared as an excursion, we do appear to have magnetic changes on the planet every 6,000 years, which also happens to be the Heinrich event cycle, but we'll come back to that. When it comes to the impact of these geomagnetic changes, the ruling study is this. Two of the top geophysicists on Earth in the number one geophysics journal on Earth, definitively declaring the danger of these events. I highly recommend Miss Biteback read this paper, but I won't hold my breath. Dr. Channel was kind enough to give us an interview on our channel shortly after the publication, where he reiterated how deadly these excursions can be. It is one of the interviews of which I am most proud in my 12 years of doing this. Of course, there are several other key studies that say the same thing, including this one that focuses on Le Champ. It was one of the most well-publicized studies of 2021, and yet many people who speak on the subject don't seem to know about it. At the AGU meeting this year, we will once again hear how these events in the past caused great chaos in the climate, confirms the volcanic upticks that come with these events. It's something we've seen at several previous AGU meetings as well. In fact, there are several studies one could look to for the fairly perfect lineup of these geomagnetic changes on Earth with major environmental disasters, including the peaks of species extinction. In fact, over the last few years, pretty much every single study on the topic comes to the same conclusion, as do several in years past, especially when the biosphere impacts line up and so do the peaks in cosmic radiation incident on our planet. And there's no mystery as to why. The magnetic field of Earth, which protects our planet from space radiation, weakens tremendously in these excursions and becomes misaligned with the poles, leading to major influx of space energy to Earth. Folks, when this happens, the climate goes into chaos, partially due to those upticks in volcanoes that come with the geomagnetic changes. And that alone is enough to cause extinctions, but the ozone destruction from protons and electrons adds UV exposure to the planet at the same time, not to mention the increase in cosmic rays and the direct radiation to the surface level when you toss the cherry on top of the navigational issues that strike various parts of the food chain due to the change in the magnetic field, you realize that the environment becomes chaotic at the same time as the food chain falters. This is why these events are so bad. Now, as for what is happening these days, NASA scientists and others declared in the year 2000 that we had lost 10% of the magnetic field since the middle of the 1800s, and the ESA Swarm Magnetic Field Mission upgraded that number to 15% in their 2010 mission report and update. I wonder if Miss Biteback can do that math. 10% lost in 150 years, and then another 5% lost in only a decade. The mission manager of Swarm at the time, Rune Flobergagen, publicly said we had gone from losing 5% of the magnetic field per century to 5% per decade. That's serious. And several subsequent studies confirmed that the magnetic field has begun changing faster and faster. Takes thousands of years, eh? Not according to the top scientists at Berkeley, who say it can happen within a human lifetime. The definitive study on the acceleration phase of excursion events suggests that it can speed up to a hundred times faster than the modern rates of change, all pointing to one inevitable conclusion. 
The cycle is not only due again, but it's happening, and it doesn't take thousands of years, and no, it's no small matter for the earth and the creatures that live here. It's a key aspect of this channel, what we do, and I'm both proud and saddened to have to keep reviewing these facts, but it's necessary for the sake of all of us. I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.